Is this light too bright? Ah. Ah. Good morning, it's the Grow Boss. This is Cannabis Hotline. We're going to be starting the show in just a couple of minutes. If you have any questions about growing cannabis, I'm the guy to ask. I write the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. I'm here at this hydro store, Henderson Hydro, all the time. I've got a... Uh, I've got some news for you too coming up later in the show and I got a couple things to go over I see you got a couple callers already give me a couple minutes let me smoke a bowl you smoke a bowl I got some news to go over and then we're gonna get the show started In just a couple minutes we'll start the show if you have some questions we'll start about questions about 5 10 after the hour uh, I got a couple of announcements to make some news to go over I'm gonna see if I can make this show a little more organized than I usually do because I've got an announcement later that you're gonna want to hear is something missing from my desk bong weed lighter bat phone in case I have my mic off remote control I feel like I'm missing something from my desk more books I usually have something, bah, we'll find out. <laughs> Halfway through the show, we'll find out when I'm missing something. Okay, the number's 84, Grow Boss, and let's see, I'm just going to smoke one more bowl here. Yo, Grow Boss, Fabella. Thank you. Um, no, I don't actually run my uh, Facebook thing, but they pretend that they're me, so it is what it is. Tickle my balls, please. No busting, Skate. You're on the wrong channel. Crack, crack. <laughs> 
the book oh the book display you know <clears throat> the book display has been gone for a minute paul and i'll tell you why i just sort of uh oh there is some more stuff though like i do have like i usually have some more like the no more grow more cards and stuff there maybe like this dish was over here before man Listen, it's Skype, Edward. Get yourself Edward pillow hands. <laughs> Get Skype. You can Skype me for free. Okay, Chief Life, take a look at green. Now you had me up on the show in June for city plants. Okay, city plants. Okay, let me, uh, I do vaporize, um, but uh, it doesn't get you high like smoking it does, although I should vaporize. Okay. I would like to point out, I don't know if it was Chief Life, but there was somebody who sent me an email. So I'll tell you the story because I need this guy to catch back up with me. I made fun of him last week. He had sent me an email and he's all right there smiling in with his plants. And he made me this offer. He's like, hey, Grow Boss, you can, uh, you can use my uh, pictures as a testimonial. I love you. I love watching your videos. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. <laughs> I sent him a thank you note and the new kinder grow boss started off with you know a you know a thank you and we're going to bury the problem between the two thank yous right so okay so I sent him a thank you so much for watching the grow boss and supporting all but unfortunately I can't use your plants because they are awful all right so I'm not really good at the burying the compliment part but so I'm like look there's no way I'm gonna right there's no way i'm going to use these plants so he sent me another email after watching the show and he said oh girl boss i'm going to show you so listen send me both those emails again because i want you to show me i want you to show me one of two things one of two things that you can fight an uphill battle and win against the statistical odds and two i think the probability is that you'll come to the point where you look at the plant and you're like oh that's what you were talking about so I'd like to extend the offer as a new kinder, kinder gentler grow boss um, to less nut stomping grow boss. Perhaps I can just phrase the truth differently. Like, for instance, at one point I was saying it's all the same shit. I don't know what the difference between price is between them. Now, perhaps what I'll say is all nutrients are fantastic and they all work great. That's a kinder, gentler way to be. So, email guy, if you're watching the show, um, okay, try. If you're watching the show and you want to uh, send me those two emails, listen, I'll track you. You can call in. I'll help talk you through it. How's that? I'll help uh, talk you through. All right, everything that you need. Okay. So let's see, if you want to call the show, oh my God, it's only nine o'clock. The show's just supposed to start right now. So much responsibility. All weighing on my head, all this responsibility is some guys smoking cannabis on a show. Ryan wants Watson. You want me to check out your garden. <clears throat> All right, Wa Ryan Watson. Let's do this. You do you post up you post up a link to your garden, and we'll take a look at it right now because I'm clearly have I, I clearly don't have anything else to do. I'm literally stalling here for an hour till the show ends. <laughs> okay, so. Send me a send me a link right here. Okay, Edward, a shit sandwich. Okay, so listen, I do have a couple things. I'm doing the Portland show next weekend. Yeah, Portland show next weekend in Portland. That's right, it's in Portland. Okay, so I got the Portland show next weekend, so I won't be doing live shows next weekend. I suppose maybe I can just repost an old show. But that always seems like a bummer. So I don't really know what the right answer is. So I'll probably post an old show. Um, let's see. I got a... <clears throat> I would like to start with... Uh, 
I would like to, uh, you know, I go to and come back to uh, comments. So I'm, uh, I got a, I'm not always a kinder, gentler grow boss, but there are certain parameters. Um, there are certain parameters that you gotta, I mean, you just gotta meet, man. You can't pour water in the gas tank. Um, so, <clears throat> so DJ JD, the King of Free. This guy's here is posting stuff, and so, listen, I grow different strains, and depending on the strain depends on how much I grow. All pot plants are different, so I want to know how you generalize them. <clears throat> okay, so basically what I always tell you guys is cannabis, it's all the same shit, man. It is all the same shit. There are three species, right? There's Ruderalis, Sativa, and Indica. But my observation is, is always really simple. It seems super easy. Oh, that's simple. I just generalize them. Not sure what the confusion is, right? I mean, it's like saying automobile or I want a soda. What's the confusion about generalizing cannabis? You say, I'd like a bag of weed. So I just want to point out to you guys just how similar all cannabis is. And if we go through the kingdom phylum, we talk about kingdom plantae, right? Plants, some sub kingdom Trichobianta, vascular plants, superdivision, spermatophyta, spermatophyta. That's how they reproduce. Seed plants, magnolia, that's the type of seed. Flower plant class. Dicondylins, that's the two, how they hatch. Order, Ert, urticalis, family, cannabinacea, genus, cannabis, species. And that's where we get species cannabis sativa. So we literally have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have to go nine levels deep in classification before we break cannabis apart into three things. Sativa indica ruderalis. So I just always want to point out to you guys, and especially here, it, it, you know, it's simple for you guys to say there's all sorts of things you guys say but I just want to point out mathematically that humans are really different looking except as soon as you start to think about it we are literally like 99.89 percent the same DNA accounting for everything from Down syndrome and webbed toes all the way to the super smartest people all of the genetic all of the genetic variabilities is like a 0.11 difference, right? It's a 1.1 penny on a dollar. I mean, that's the range from both ends. And almost everybody is right there in the middle. So, sorry. So my observation is, sorry, what were you saying about cannabis being not generalized? Seems fairly classified and well known to me. So apparently he's a 20 year grower who has been doing different things on each strain to dial them in. He has a cross with this and a number one amp royal amnesia and a very dense and potent bud, a thousand watt and seed. Wow! With six foot distance in a clone seed box, bump it to 2000 in veg and flower to 20 inches. Now we have four lights running two at 45 degrees. So I'm assuming he's got two lights overhead and two 45 degrees like that and two at top all plants show 800 par at soil I, I don't know you say 800 par at soil man are you going through the canopy and you still have 800 par is it 800 par at soil with no plants in it with some under trim not as far as lolly but i use these as clones i usually grow four plants and get three pounds out of it can i do better okay so we got a 20 year grower telling me how it is it is like this all plants are the same and, and all I'm suggesting is that once you approach this problem where you know what's going on it's a it, it's a thing it's a thing for growers so um, thanks but he was saying each strand is slight different than others mex dirt weed and blue dream two diff strains all together you know, you say they're two diff strains all together, but I go right back here and I go, listen, man, either it's a sativa or an indica. I don't know why you think these are, I mean, these are the subspecies. I mean, how much further, 
if all the minerals are the same at some point something has to be the same even with the plants um so he does 24 hours of light and veg um okay so i understand the guy's point but border weed is the same as designer weed maybe not the potency but i assure you genetically they are super similar and if he's talking about genetics and these strains, I just want to point out that when you quote strain and phenotype, the way a plant expresses itself, and genotype, where it comes from, and we talk about the Mendelssohn chart, I just want you to understand that the phenotype is merely the expression of the gene. So when I talk about this wide range of anywhere from genetic malformities to uh, genetic, you know, genetic oddities at either end, whether that be malformation or or you can fly or read minds, whatever that range is. The observation here is still the same. Genetically, we are the same, man. There is very few things that get triggered that change you. You know what I mean? Like beyond that. And so we are 99, we are 98.9% similar. I mean, you look at dogs, they say dogs are the widest genetic visual range of animals for the, for, on the planet you know because everything you look at flies okay everything has a dna that's really similar don't care what continent you develop on hominid is hominid humanoid is humanoid okay <clears throat> so I, I have no idea i tell this guy i understand his point but i really have no idea what all the technical information has to do i mean we don't have this technical information on plants growing outside. All you have to do is basically grow plants indoors. So, I, you know I'm not a fan of this technical information. I believe it blindsides you. There are rookies in sports that set records. You know what I mean? So there's a surprise. And I really have no idea what he's asking me, but I'll tell you this. This guy's got 24 hours of light on seedlings with 1,000 watts. And he's got 4,000 watts in flower. I mean, if you're showing up with three pounds, if we just do the math, thousand watts, pound and a half, he's got four thousands he finishes with. I mean, that's six pounds. So he's 20 year grower with all sorts of locked in, locked in information. This is an old dog. I mean, no disrespect to this. You know what I mean? I'm, what I'm doing is I'm giving you an example of old dog mentality. Here's a 20 year grower. He's locked into what he's locked into and I can respect that. But I can, I struggle with it when, when you're not hitting the numbers and you're telling me what's up. All I'm suggesting is that this industry is not particularly known for empathy or for slow, stalling ball. You know what I mean? Slow rolling. This industry isn't really known for those types of uh, people, right? So what is the industry known for? People that grow cannabis are 18 to 49 year old, dumb, stupid, aggressive males, just like me. Five months is an eternity. And if you've got a seed for one month and you veg for two months and you flower for two months, your plant is five months old. I've had like three relationships in my life that have been, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I don't have very many relationships that are longer than 90 days. Probably because dumb, stupid, arrogant, aggressive male, right? With no empathy. Ha <laughs> ha! So all I'm suggesting is the type of personality that grows cannabis, when you make decisions for your plants, the type of people that grow cannabis tend to make aggressive decisions. Listen, I hate growing cannabis. Oh, have I grown? I've grown. The magic left the building long ago. What are we really talking about here? I mean, it's a lot of fucking work. Did what's his name? Send me Ryan Watson. Send me. Um, um, Ryan Watson. I wonder if there is some way for me to, okay, so I don't see, okay, I don't think that link was for me. Okay. Mic's on, video's on, streaming's good. Okay. All right. So anyway, I do have some pictures I'm going to go over. <clears throat> Somebody happened to email them to me. So if you have a, if you want to call in, the number is 84 Grow Boss. This 
is my hydro store. That's my lazy dog, Ralph, by the front door. Best fucking dog. Mm. He's seven this summer. Okay. Um, let's see. That store, lots of product in my store. Oh, you guys have probably been following me. I have been updating my store. We have been bringing product in. In fact, if you like, we went ahead and we started sticker and stuff like with prices different sizes of the tents i don't have my advertisers like green pad right behind me and turbo clone and mondi and thermoflow and clonex and clonex root maximizer i don't have them i mean here they are bloom right up here so i know i'll tell you we're building i'll tell you i had an announcement for later in the show so keep watching because i got an announcement later in the show i think i'm going to need some of your guys help i think i have an opportunity for some of you Oh, it's a good announcement. Sorry. I don't mean to drag this out like uh, I'm about to fire everybody and close the store. I didn't mean it like that. I got a good announcement for you. And so Taco is heat stress. GJ Jovan. I believe Taco is heat stress, but more importantly, it's how you're heat stressing them. One, you could be boiling the plant from the light too close. It could just be a little bit of CalMag that'll taco the edges. Are the Is it also folding up from the center of that main vein down the leaf? Is there purpling in the stems and stalks? You gotta know all the signs and symptoms before you just make a conclusion. So when someone says tacoing, you know what I mean? You gotta make sure it's tacoing, not rolling down from too much light. That's way too much light. Oh, let's see. <clears throat> 781, good morning. Good morning, robots. Thanks for taking my call. Sweet. I uh, read your book. I'm, I'm appreciative. Thank you, thank you, me too. Calling from Massachusetts. Massachusetts. And I had a two-part question for you. Okay. I wanted to know, now that all these states and all these people who have been growing on a commercial level with these scientists and botanists, and they're all selling to the same kind of people with the same product, why they haven't come up with a most efficient way to grow. <coughs> Instead, all these companies are growing with completely different techniques, different systems, different methods. Okay, uh, a completely legitimate question, and I have a totally awesome answer for you. Continue on. Second question. The other part of the question is, just for shits and giggles, I know that it doesn't matter to me because I'm not a great grower. I'm actually a new grower. But is there a max amount of light that a marijuana plant can take in before it's no longer worth giving it more amount of light? Yes, sir. And what, what is that? Oh, How I would no, I, I have no explain idea. Explain that to someone listen, that asked. Listen, listen, I got no. Listen, when it comes to numbers, it would be like asking me exactly what your car could shift at. Now, I say all automobiles right. are the same when we generalize them, but the reality is there is a four, six, and eight cylinder. You have to drive a four with more RPMs. You have to drive an eight with lower RPMs. I'm just saying a stick isn't an automatic. What I'm suggesting is, is that when we look at the rules of the road and a vehicle, it is everything going forward. It is a gas. It is a brake. There are turns, right, left and right. You do have to brake going into a turn. You do have to. 99% of what goes on is the same nonsense, right? And there's a few variances. For instance, do you want to beat the yellow? Do you want to beat the yellow? You come and hop brake hard. So all I'm suggesting is, is there technique? Yes. And this is going to lead back into your answer for question one. Is there technique? Yes. But we're talking about, would you feed a 10 week old plant? Let me ask you this. All, a, a ten, I tell you 10 week old plant. I tell you thousand watt light. Do all 10 week old plants get fed the same under a thousand watt light? Let me ask you, sir. I, in my personal opinion, I would say not. If my plant is showing great health, then I would stick with what I'm doing if it shows that it's uh, showing okay. signs of this, uh, being dark okay, from right. the light, wait, wait. then I would say you're no. Right. Listen, listen, you're right. I, I said that wrong. Let me rephrase this question because you're, you're, you're giving me op options. I didn't mean it like, uh, let's just say, here's two scenarios. It's a four week veg, six week flower, 100% healthy. You are six weeks into flower. It is a 10 week old plant, scenario A. Scenario B, just as healthy. You are 10 weeks deep into veg in a 25 gallon bucket with six foot monsters versus four week veg, six week flower. You're in a three gallon bucket and almost finishing. These two plants are both 10 weeks old. Would you feed them the same? I 
I would say no, right. but I could also That's say right. that if the, either of the plants started with lower light and they went no, up no, incrementally, no, 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 if you no, can no, afford no, to no, get no, them no, for no, no. I don't even want you to imagine a scenario that I didn't include because I could give you a thousand more scenarios. Okay. That's not what I want to do. Yeah. Here. What I always like to do here is keep you guys focused on how to think about it. We know that we break going into a turn and accelerate. Now we have to apply that to either a stick or an automatic. Nah, that's not too hard. Okay. Top, top a second, bottom a third. We just talk a little bit of a relationship here because for no reason should you ever be back in first. Okay. So we have this little bit of a zone that we're talking about. Now, you asked me about facilities. Let me tell you, man, this is super interesting. <clears throat> because you say that all of these botanists and these smart people are growing. But I know the people that are growing, dude, and they are not botanists. They were nine months ago <laughs> customers at my store getting high with me, just like they're getting high with me now. Only now, they're customers at my store and they run facilities. I mean, you see these guys, they work at the facilities, they make videos of themselves, they have their own brands of product. All I'm suggesting is, is that you don't put snow tires on a vehicle on the West Coast, yet you can have the same truck on the West Coast and the East Coast with a little bit of modification. It becomes an East Coast vehicle. I'm saying that things are so similar. Okay, now, in terms of the facilities, hang on a sec. Okay. In terms of the facilities, this is very funny, and I'll tell you why. You have to ask this from a business model perspective, because, <clears throat> because if we just look at straight economics of it, um, frankly, 50% of restaurants fail, right? I mean, look at all the businesses Amazon yeah. put out of business, and now Amazon's buying brick and mortar. Now, if we're going to talk a little bit of business, that takes us away from growing. But we look at who who is opening up these facilities. Sometimes it's hydro store owners. Sometimes it's most of the time it seems to be it seems to be people that are already in the profession, which seems to me a super conflict of interest. Like if you're already a doctor, a lawyer, any kind of politician, any kind of family member of any of these people, it seems to me like you should be immediately banned as a conflict of interest because who gets the facilities in new states it seems to be police captain it seems to be people in the government officials it seems to be people that have been banishing it for years seem to be the first ones to benefit off of it drives me fucking nuts how disrespectful they are so here we have people that have been fighting it and don't know anything about it now they're going to open up facilities listen if 50 percent of restaurants fail how many facilities do you think are going to fail? Do you know, I've lost count of how many facilities there are in Las Vegas. I, they tell me that there's something like 10 near the Strip and 6 in the Southwest. And they still, the governor declared an emergency for weed and probably has a vested interest or one of his friends have a vested interest. Listen, man, you should not be able to prosecute people and own a facility. Whether the facility is legal or not, these people, anyway, drives me fucking nuts that's our government you know when people talk about conspiracies and stuff oh aliens all that but here's something right in front of you where the people that are going to arrest you are the ones who moonlight securing the facilities they're literally paid to guard a legal facility while they arrest you for doing cannabis okay anyway you should expect a fail a fairly high failure rate now, when we step outside, what we can immediately see, we take a step back and we look at the forest from a business perspective. <clears throat> we look at trade shows. Now, suddenly there's a bunch of trade shows. We've had some and there have been others and there's high times in the Cannabis Cup. But the reality is, is if we look at the trajectory of any long-term business, just like I tell you, if we look at the trajectory of any successful grower, we just have to find a matching trajectory and then place ourselves on that. Look where the industry is at the moment, where all the other industries have gone in the end, and then we'll know where we're headed. Okay. If 50% of everything fails and it's legal, it's not legal, nobody knows, their government scamming money out of the people owning them, the people owning them are scamming them, then you should expect a huge amount of failure and turnover because there's so much turmoil. Also, it's groundbreaking. Listen, it's not like you invented something that has to go into aluminum can and you call the two aluminum can makers because how much new business for aluminum can machine making machines can there be? 
So I'm just saying that without having a yeah. well developed, well thought out industry. Listen, what's that? New, okay, they've got something, dude. Somebody brought something in. What is that called? Where you take the terps, uh, you take the terps and you pour it back over the 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 caps. Um, not paste, not oil, not shatter. Bah, son of a bitch. What was the name of that? Oh, my God. They've got this new stuff. I mean, it's just like one step beyond oil. Listen, the industry hasn't even finished developing all of the inside products yet. <clears throat> like, how many more soups can they make? You know what I mean? Like, how many more Ben and Jerry's flavors yeah. can they make? So what I'm suggesting is there's going to be a maturity. So when we look at the trade shows and we look in relation to where the cannabis industry is, and I have an announcement about we're talking about the cannabis industry later in the show because I think I'm going to need your help. But we talk about what's happening in the cannabis industry and we look at where the interest is. So what we're going to do is we're going to look backward. We're going to take the clues that we see. We're going to follow the money and we're going to trail it backward. We're just going to do business scene investigation we're just gonna do a little bsi okay so we're gonna do a little backward business scene investigation here so who are the big shows the big show is the mj bizcon and when you look at who's going to the mj bizcon it's all about the infrastructure it's about security it's about video cameras it's about building it's about legal help it's about getting started there's a whole bunch of systems to choose from my vendors are there their competition is there my advertisers are there the stores are there i mean not stores the the people that we the, all the product that we sell in our stores goes there so where are all the vendors and where are everybody attending the show and that's the mj bizcon why because nobody has any idea what's going on now when we have an when we have an industry where the government has no idea what's going on. And we have an industry <laughs> where the vendors have no idea what's going on. And the, and, the, and the partakers, the investors, like that have to own a store or invest in a facility have no idea what's going on. And the people that go to the show have no idea what's going on because the government has no idea what's going on. The DEA is clear. The DEA told you it's federally illegal. Eh. Jeff Sessions may do this. Ah, bah, bah, bah. You hear all sorts of things with that much uncertainty. Listen, th there's so many, there's so many people going to the MJ BizCon show. Not only did they get a newer location, they said they're going, there's going to be 15,000 people because the newer location's bigger because they got 33% more boots. Okay, huge growth. I look at it like there are very few. We're taxing the resources hard on the planet. There are very few industries left to do. What are you going to do? Sell solar? I mean, there's cannabis. There's solar. You know, in terms of otherwise, you have to head toward technology and you have to come up with a competing app and a difficult mark. Anyway, so here we have these different positions of people and there's all sorts of uncertainty. There is no, this happened organically. All the parts and pieces fit together and it smoothly became a bill on Capitol Hill, and it didn't have those parts and pieces, so I should expect absolute turmoil at the finish line. Why? Because nobody knows what's really going on. Okay, so now we have nobody knows what's going on. The government doesn't know what's going on. The people are stepping out ahead of everybody. They're going to lead the government on this one. How would you possibly work the details where all of those uncertainties, it, it's a new market. Listen, if you go to the aluminum can, convention it's probably really small it's probably not going to a bigger location i mean i don't know how much aluminum canning can change i mean what does this industry change ah oh, we got some lecs and some leds we got a couple choices you need a different light um uh, we got digital ballasts but the ballasts are then the bulbs or hoods are still the same we got more nutrients i mean in the last long, long time, our industry hasn't changed too much. So all I'm suggesting is that, is that when you look at these products, oh, uh, bup, 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 I'll even, okay, so I'll even uh, throw out, um, uh, I'll even throw out, here's a product for you. 
Let's see if I can find. Um, okay, let's see if I can show you this video. Um, I would love to show you and give you a shout out. And you know what? You guys can call in and tell me what you think because they want me to carry this product. And I really don't know what to say about it. I mean, I look at it. Listen, I'm going through this transition where I'm trying to carry more product, right? So let me see yeah. if I can find this for you. Um, original 420 brand. Um, original 420 brand.com. <clears throat> they want me to. They want me to buy. Oh, let's check it out. They want me to buy this. Nope, not that. But. Uh, bu -bu. Why don't, I don't have any sound. Okay, it's lab tested. They got there. Okay, this right here. Now, this is the debutter bucket lid. Can't. Okay, shop now. Let's. Can I. Can I get a demo? Ah, okay, listen. Here's the guys. Okay, so I guess I can't make it bigger. But check this out. All right, watch this video. Tell me what you think. You've got to watch it a couple times. All right. Now, to me, that just seems super brutal. You see the buds stuck in there? So, I don't really know what I think about that product. They want me to buy it. They called me up. So, here's another product. I mean, there's a lot of friggin' inventions going on right now. That's all I'm saying. So, the market is unsure of itself. It's unsure where it's going. It's always been... Look at all the different ways you can grow in my store. We've got rock wool, cloth pots, 20 different kinds of soil, 80 different kinds of nutrients, 30 tent manufacturers, 20 bulb manufacturers. And then you look at Office Depot and we couldn't sustain an Office Depot and a home and a Office Max in the same in the same, you know, once they got steam, you know, they were across the street from each other. Once the internet showed up, they had a right size. So there's a huge amount of investment. And what do they say? Early risk, right? Greater risk, greater reward. So a lot of people coming in that don't know the industry. They see it as an opportunity. They're stuffy people that have enormous amounts of money because they're the kind of people who have lived their right, right life right since they've been a kid. They knew better from the beginning. They got one job. They stayed with it. Uh, they're the kind of people that are in the position to take those kinds of risks with those kinds of savings. So they come into an industry, and I'll give you an example of an email I got a couple weeks ago. Hey, our grower, this is from a facility, our grower wants us, wants us to hire his friend for $3,000 a month and give him a 10% increase in, in pay plus a 5% increase in uh, profit sharing to 10%. What do you think about that? And I said, what do I think about that? The fuck do I, you know what I mean? Like, the fuck do I know? Is the guy growing? How much is he growing? What's his, what's his, you know, return on investment? Do you need another employee? I mean, you've given me no information and your big complaint is about your grower cost. Now you say as a caller that all these botany people are in there and doing this, but I don't believe it now. What I will say is going to happen next is we're going to see one, maybe one and a half, maybe two more increases in potency. And here's why. See, for the last 40 years, cannabis has been illegal. So you haven't been able to grow for the long term. I don't believe they're going to GMO the plants, although I'm sure somebody will GMO the plants. But I do believe the, that cannabis plants grown on this scale week after week, day after day, just like when you have something at your job that you do day after day after day after day, you get better and smoother at it. What I'm suggesting is, is that there's going to come this point in the near future where people are able to grow and take cuttings. You know what I mean? They're going to have 20 harvests a year. At 20 harvests a year, they'll start to see 
accidental differences. And so over the next year or so, we'll start to see like clubs where the, where the facility growers go, where they share knowledge. Um, a facility something or other person will break out with their strain and take the lead. They'll bring everybody with them and we'll start to see the same way I took all the nonsense in the industry and straightened it all out in one book. People will start selecting the best one in a batch of 50 and then they'll mom that out and, and take clones from there. So we're going to see the same way it went from border weed to everything is as minimum 20% now. We went from 8% on average THC to 20% on average. So... You know, we have oils and, and, and all these other options now that are that are 80 and 90% to smoke. So I'm just suggesting that there are all of these new options. So in a field that's so uncertain, there are so many ways to grow because historically there have been so many ways to grow. Why? Because cannabis investors are almost, cannabis investors are probably, <laughs> Just a little dumber than the growers that come in that literally have, I got to move in 60 days. I have just enough money to move. I've got some seeds. Can I grow enough to move? And then, and then you're like, you have the money to move, but you're going to spend it on growing the money to move. And I just look at them and I say, uh, yes, <laughs> it's happened so many times. Okay. With these type of people in an I have a question for what you were just talking about. Okay. You talk about growing commercially as if it's new to the world. Haven't there been countries that have been grown commercially on a science level in other countries for many, many years now? Possibly. Tell me about it, have they? That's your statistic. So give me an example oh, of one. Like Europe. Everyone goes to Europe to buy marijuana products, okay. THC products at the store like candy. And they've been growing for I don't even know how many years. Wouldn't that opportunity arise there to be able to pick from a batch of 50 that we can now openly accept now that it's legal in more and more states here? Okay, so let me ask you, does it, you said scientists and botanists. What I hear is Starbucks coffee barista. Somebody that's smart talented sort of manage the whole thing i don't see how a scientist or a botanist gets into the weed clubs in europe i don't see your jump now are they very good at it okay but i think that makes my point in europe they've been doing it how long have they been doing it legally in europe i i don't even know I 10 years google it but 10 years 15 years pick a number for me yeah maybe okay so i would say 10, 10 years. years in 10 years and they're smart, right? I mean, the Germans are pretty smart. They are on top of it. The Netherlands are pretty smart. They are a bunch of friggin' engineers, man. So if these guys, if the bottom end of the engineers that are the cannabis baristas haven't figured it out yet, how much further do you need to take it in the United States? But you didn't say they brought in a bunch of cannabis baristas from Europe who are now running these facilities. Because I know the guys that are running these facilities, oh my God. They come in and they ask me questions, and I and and I'm aghast. Is aghast a good adjective for that? I am aghast at the questions that they ask me. Now, what happens is somebody who doesn't know anything about growing now buy but has a lot of money, doctor, lawyer, government official, doesn't know anything about growing, comes in and 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 starts to build a team and a staff. You wouldn't even know what questions to ask a grower. How would you even know what to hire? So there's much uncertainty. People that are inexperienced are looking to do this. They're jumping in. They're trying to be the first ones there because that's where the money is. The first ones there. Um, yeah, so I'm just suggesting that uh, these are... Uh, these are the way, these are the people. So without even like, you know, your question is, why are there so many systems? Because nobody has any idea, but they will settle on a system. The, the industry is just in turmoil. Everybody thinks that they're yeah. going to like knock it out of the park. Like, uh, let's see, we've got um, uh, mjbizcon.com maybe. Let's see. 
MJ Biz Conference. Let's see. Register now. Exhibit sessions pre-conference. You know what? Let's take a look at business. No, I don't. Probably that's not what I want. Oh, the crash course was loaded with in MJ BizCon. Okay, so this is a review of something else or something like this. Okay, Can Advisors. The crash course was loaded with information about all facets of the industry. No matter what your focus is, there are valuable things to be learned industry-wide, and the crash course gives you that. Um, new to the industry, prep yourself for the Marijuana Business Conference and Expo via this intensive day-long workshop. Listen, I do a day-long workshop three hours every weekend. I mean, like, literally, this is turns into almost like Cannabis BizCon, which, again, is what the announcement I want to talk to you guys about toward the end of the show. Shit, it's 940. Oh, yeah. Haven't smoked a bowl in 20 minutes. Everybody stop. Okay, listen. You see the point that I'm getting about with this, with what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. All right, listen. Thanks for the call. Let me get on to another caller. Oh, whew, let me smoke a bowl. I'm just saying that the cannabis business will eventually turn into the cigarette business and eventually it will be the marijuana alcohol tobacco firearms and explosives and the government will just be even bigger <laughs> let us take more money <clears throat> i think vermifier is great vermifier is just a hot soil like it's just sort of like on the hot end for starts but if you transplant it from a one into a three or a five it's just, I mean, they say they're hot. Everyone wants to be the Amazon or Facebook camps. All right. Scott sucks bugs. Uh, okay. Um, let's see. Ah, okay. I'm not on a call. My mic's working. I'm smoking balls. Welcome to my office. <clears throat> I wore a different shirt today. Shazam. Oh, the ATFIM. The alcohol, tobacco, firearms, and explosives, and marijuana. Right. They'll be the ones who uh, will put a camera in every house. Mm. Oh, that's right. Great, Nate. Thank you for reminding me. One of the things that I'm supposed to start doing is start being more professional about the show. So I just want to remind you guys. I always appreciate when you take a minute and you click like. What am I supposed to say? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You Come on. You're supposed to click like for the show. You're supposed to subscribe to the channels. Remember, until I get my, my we finish the, I'm knocking out that thing right over there in the store. So we have a dedicated booth. Oh, shit. Well, there's a clue to what we're going to talk about here in a minute. But, um, yeah, so uh, my, my, my sponsors, right? I mean, you got GreenPad, Clonex, Mondi, Thermoflow, all the products you need to see in your local hydro store, Clonex. Their new product, their root, their root maximizer, Clonex rooting gel. Ah, we carry, see, that's what I'm telling you guys. If you just pick the, the 10 products or so that are masters of the industry, and you just sort of follow along those and you don't kill your shit. Ah, dude, you're in the zone. That's why you should follow my sponsors. Now, I'm not aware, I don't have like, I should have like a little sponsor thing that I roll when I take a break and go potty. I know that, I'm not that organized, but I am gonna get that organized. So, how is the vibe there about getting the Raiders? Um, our Costco has big Raiders pop-ups. That's pretty good. Um, root, root. <laughs> yeah, that's funny thanks Blackwell okay <clears throat> Portland remember next week no show in Portland okay listen so here's what I'm, I'm expecting to do I've been approached by a couple of vendors if you've been watching the channel I, I, you see um, we've sort of all right, so I'll tell you about project, dude. I'll tell you about my project here in one sec. Let me see. Let me take one more call and then, and then we'll do this. Nine oh seven. Good morning. 
Morning. Hey, I had a question about your root race stuff. Uh, using the product, sir, should you use that after you do seeds, or should you stop and you just have them nutrient? You know, does that have it with the nutrients you're using? Ask me that question again. Okay. The, the products you suggest to use on your root race, should you use that during the whole grow or just until you start vegging? Okay, so interestingly enough, I understand what you're asking. So, all right, listen, thanks for the call. Interestingly enough, what he's asking is, should, should you take the products you see in the show and use them the whole way through? Now, remember, the ones that I tested, right? So we had great white. Those are microbes. Listen, you'll use microbes every other week until two weeks before you finish. The Clonex solution, this thing has B1 thiamine, everything else in it. Clonex solution, B1 thiamine, and all these micros and all these micros and stuff. Look at all that stuff it has in it. Look, look at how low the nutrient number is and look at all the other things it has besides nutrients. So you'll use this all the way through. I mean, there was Myco Chum. There was a couple of other products in there too, right? Uh, we had Rooting Hormone. We had, right, we had Green Fuse and Roots by Humboldt Nutrient. But you wouldn't use a Rooting Hormone all the way through. Why? Because they're rooting early on and then the roots follow with the rest of the plant. All right, listen. And then the plant grows the rest of the time. Okay, I got, let me do one more call because you tried earlier. 419, what can I do for you? Hey, uh, bro, boss, this is Jovan again, man. I was just reaching out again, man, because I still had a couple uh, questions and concerns about what I got going on. Um, I know you had seen uh, a couple pictures or whatnot, but um, what what would you recommend for the, um, like, as far as, like, the clawed and puffy leaves? You had said too much water and the humidity. But usually, you know, I mean, I, I'm in a five-gallon bucket. Wait, wait, let me ask. Let me ask. Wait, 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 hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Are you the guy from the email? I'm sorry? Did you send me that email? Uh, no, I messaged you on Facebook. Oh, okay. I don't know if that was you I spoke to. Okay. No, okay. So, no, you didn't speak to me because Facebook. But I got an email from... Uh, Jeez, I just thought it was, uh, I got an email from Joe something with a bunch of pictures. You didn't send that? Okay. Right. Joe Johnson? I don't know the last name, man. Did you send me an email to the grow boss? Uh, man, tell you the truth, I may have. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I know I got two different emails. Did you send? And I know I, I've this, been watching you for a while. Did so. you circle the plant and send me a bunch of clean pictures with the trellis? No, no. Okay. No. All right, not you. Okay, because that that problem matches the pictures that I have. Okay. So what's okay. the question? Um. Now, um, growing in a five-gallon bucket, and when I sent the pictures early on Facebook, um, I was told that I may have a uh, problem from too much water or uh, I guess the humidity. Now I keep my humidity somewhere between like forty-five and. 55 and I, I feed five gallon buckets with only a gallon of water is that still too much water <clears throat> how often do you feed it a gallon of water um lately i've only been feeding them every three maybe four days so here's here's the reality the reality is you feed until the media is wet and then you don't i mean you water uh -huh. until wait Turn down whatever's in the background off. And you know what? Listen. I, I, okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I think I understand. That's, we're, that's we're you down. right now. I had no idea it was going to be that loud. <laughs> Go so, ahead. I'm sorry. So you water until it's wet, and then you don't water until it needs to be watered again. You feed when she okay. has to be fed, and then you don't feed until she needs to be fed again. So when you tell me something like, lately... Then I have to wonder, uh -huh. okay, so you damage the plant a ways back. But let me just tell you, this one gallon every so often, there's no way for me to know if that's right or wrong. I mean, you're right. supposed to water until it's wet, and then you don't water. See, I hear one gallon every four days as being a lot of work. 
And I don't know, maybe, I mean, you do one gallon every four days, but maybe you could do three gallons every 12. Three gallons every 12 is way right. better than one gallon every three. All right, did that answer your question? Yes, and um, I also had one last one. Um, what uh, type of potassium uh, uh, supplement would you recommend for the taco road leaves? Like they're curling upward, but not a lot. Um, without looking at pictures, listen, thanks for that call. Without looking at pictures, I, I, I don't know without looking at pictures because I don't know, if, even if you've overwatered. Hey, 702, hang on one sec. Hey, what's up? Hey, 702, hang on a sec. All right, no problem. Okay. So, uh, listen, if you've overwatered, it doesn't matter what you add. And if you add too much light, it doesn't matter what you add. And if you back your light up, we don't know until the garden is healthy if what you're doing is right or wrong. So, you would have to send me pictures. I was supposed to go over some pictures. 702, what can I do for you? Good morning. What's up, man? How's it going, girl boss? Ah, it's always good to hear from um, Michael, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to make a recommendation real quick. And that is, like I put in the comments, not to use the uh, Clonex uh, Mycorrhiza microbes for the, tur the turbo cloners. Okay. Because it will completely clog the system. Uh, listen, so so you're saying don't use... Tur don't use... Okay, I, I got you. Don't use the uh, Clonex Great White uh, my, oh, it's Clonex Root Maximizer. Hang on a second. Acha. Now, I remember this conversation in the store. So, what I would like to remind everybody is one of the biggest things that I tell you is you got to understand how to use your equipment. So the caller says, don't use Clonex root maximizer in a turbo clone. Now a turbo clone is this green box that you see right here. The turbo clone.
check, check. Okay. Let's see. Live dashboard. Ah, I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay. Okay. All right. I got you. I got you. The thing stops. See how good I'm getting at this? That's exactly why I won't hire a producer until I know my show. Okay. Got you. Okay. Yep. Don't even know. Boom. Don't even know why. Okay. So I'm still working with the, I wanted to show you. Okay. So we poured liquid grape. There we go. There it is. Boom. Look at that. I just gave up. So what did we put in the mix? We, we poured, we poured soluble microbes in here. So I just want to point out that the caller was talking about Clonex root maximizer. There it is. Clonex root maximizer. And if you look at the blue label, it says soluble. And if you look at the green label, it says granular. Green label, granular. Blue label, soluble. Now we had this discussion. And if you have a manifold with these little tiny holes and you put in soluble and they get picked up by the water pump, they're going to clog your manifold and you're going to have a bad time. All I'm saying is you got to know how to use the equipment. And that's why I tell you guys. Well, actually, before I tell you guys that, let me tell you this. Oh, this is... Uh, this is this. Let me post this over here. Um, okay, so that's why I tell you guys. Oh, this is just me being high. Oh, this is just me being high making videos. But uh, that's why I tell you guys. Look at this shit. You that's you gotta know how to use the equipment. That's why I tell you guys. Everybody hates something in my store. Everybody loves everything in my store in terms of customers. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying is that if you pick the wrong product and, and you use the one that's meant for transplant in media instead of the one that's meant for soluble in water and then you try to stuff it into, you're going to have bad time. That's all I'm saying. So you got to know how to use the thing correctly. Okay, I got listen. I got like five minutes before customers start showing up. So let's talk about the project I have. Um, okay, let me go through. Fuck. Let me go through. I just want to show you a couple pictures. We're gonna talk about tomorrow. Um, here's a. Uh, here's a. Uh, couple of pictures from this garden. He was having some problems. He gave us. You know, the Sunday show is much longer because I got two hours before the store opens. So here's some, that's, you know, those are some hella shaved legs. You know what I mean? You don't see legs like that too often. Okay, so um, let's see. He's got, a, he says he's got a couple little problems going on. That's why the last caller asked me about the, the overwatering and the too much light. I thought may have been, oh man, this guy, uh, this guy came home and found his, <laughs> his girlfriend had a pair of nuts look at that bummer for this guy so okay um let's see okay 781 you're gonna have to call tomorrow anyway so there are a bunch of pictures for that now the project i have that i've been approached with is we've been talking about project grow house for a while Right, I put that off because I had to do Project Grow Store. Ralphie, oh, I see his little ears move. Such bad dog sitting there. Get you bad dog. So we talked about Project Grow Store, and I have to end up knocking out this whole wall here. Like we're knocking out the whole wall on the left side of your. Sc I mean, we're not. See where the fan is. We're knocking out that whole wall, and uh, and and we're gonna make a studio out of it. So I will put product around it. My goal is, and I've been redoing the store, you've been watching Project Grow Store, another aspect of what the fuck I do all day. That's why I don't have my products behind me and I'm stuck in front of these tents because we redid the store and check out, I mean, like look at, I mean, we got a pack now. Okay, so we're going to make literally a demonstration station in my store we're going to give me a green screen we're going to get my setback i'm going to have a spot where i can bring up used equipment and show you prices and tell you stories but i'll tell you the other half of what we're going to use the studio for 
I'm going to start doing Cannabis Information Network. We got the website. I've been approached by several vendors. And what we're going to do is we're going to report on cannabis. And we're going to do it in a different sort of way. We're going to, in one part, and, you know, it's going to be like, I'm not reinventing the loop. I mean, it's a 24-hour loop. So we need, what, seven hours of video that we change every so often? But... We're going to do a little different. We'll have a little bit of Cannabis Shopping Network, right? Like, <laughs> like half sham wow guy. You know what I mean? Like, I can order, I can get stacks of this so cheap. I can give you guys sick deals, put coordinated stuff together. But more importantly, there are a lot of you. And in terms of the project, I am always, always, I always try to build a team as a force multiplier. I try to use the talent of the people that I know and around me and offer the opportunities out to them first. So I literally had one of my, one of my listeners, God, I lost his name. I wish I remembered it so I could say thank you every time. Sent me a bunch of images scanned from the book that I could use for the show. So I wasn't opening up the book under this camera. I've got Semit who put together that video for, uh, of me high <laughs> that time touching my teeth, falling asleep. Thanks, I always appreciate that. So I'm just saying there's a lot of talent. So here's what I'm thinking. What I'm thinking in terms of news is this. If you guys would like to create programming that I can coordinate, for instance, um, in terms of news, you're in a state where it's legal and that interests you. Listen, you could stand up, film yourself, you could report in front of a desk. You could call in and we could do it like that and record you like that. We can set up all sorts of stuff to change, uh, to, to report on the news in your state or your area. Then we divide up news by state. We can do news by country. But here's an opportunity for any of you, any of you, to help me coordinate programming. Listen, you wanna cook cannabis and you wanna be on a show and you wanna show us how you do it, you wanna show us your secrets. Listen, I could just as easily put cooking with Kathy, cooking with Kirk, cooking with Ken. If you know something and you wanna get it out there, I have to put this channel together. So you wanna develop content, I have a way to put it out there. Now, you've read my book, you see I do things a little different than most. I don't view things in the same way that the current market does. And and I tend to see what's going to happen next because I already know the trajectory. I go over it with you guys. We started the business show, so we talk about the business show. So I'm just suggesting that I have an opportunity here to put together a well-funded, well-advertised channel. Listen, I can even get up there Take a lesson on cutting clones and put the Clonex Rooting Gel Root Riot Starter Plug Kit Mondi Dome Sunlight Supply Sun Blaze Light together in a package that we ship to you cheaper than you could do on eBay. So we have an opportunity here to put together. Oh, you know what? You know what the final thing was? I was sitting here and I was like, that the governor or somebody in Nevada declared a state of emergency for cannabis because they ran out. Listen, man, it's federally illegal and the, somebody in our state issued a state of emergency for a product that we're selling that's federally illegal. And he said we didn't have enough. And now they're gonna do something else with, um, okay, so Robert Blackwell, okay. So cooking with topless Tammy, listen, as in unacceptable but yeah i mean all right i listen i don't really care it, it, it's the internet you know what i mean like, oh it's youtube so i guess i have to care up to that point you could call it but you can't do it but let's say that we let's say that we take this to a professional level let's say that i'm going to court i'm going to be the next ted turner i'm gonna put together a network and we're gonna sell it off Let's say that you and I and the people on this crew want to put something together and do it like that. Listen, it's a force multiplier. There are all of you and one of me. Could I create all the content? Yes, because you've watched me create it for years. 
but I don't need eight hours of grow boss. I mean, I just don't need that many costumes. I don't want to do the mustaches. I don't listen. <laughs> Robert Blackwell, I'm in. Paul Z, I'm in. So what will be on this channel? I'm telling you, we can do a couple of different channels, right? Like we can do the Cannabis Information Network. You hear how I talk about cannabis, right? You hear how I trajectorize. You hear how I apparently make up words today. So you hear how I talk about cannabis. You hear how I take my degree and I apply it. Listen, I'll coordinate the effort, whatever your specialty is. Let's do something together. I need to do a Grow Boss Diaries. No, I really, see, I really don't. See, here's the deal that I make when with myself whenever I take on a project. If I'm gonna run a business, like I'm a paramedic nurse, I took on that project. I don't take projects on for money. That is zero my goal. Um, it is never my goal to get money. That is never what I want. Does it happen? Seems to happen when you do a good job, but that's never the focus. The focus is always to be successful. When you win, you win. And money doesn't define winning. Money defines you have money. So in, if, if more money, you know what I mean? Like, okay, so my goal is to be the best. So I went out to be a paramedic nurse. Boom, I got both degrees. I'm a paramedic. I even wrote a I even wrote a book about it called Vital Signs. Probably the most brutal book you've ever read is me being a paramedic, rolling up to people's houses, throwing your wallets out the window, stealing everything, whatever. Okay. I'm just saying that, that when we look back historically and all of those dispensaries opened up in Vegas five years ago before it was legal, there was a bunch of stoners who were finally set free with creativity. And they blew that shit up with their businesses. And I think that we can do the same thing here. Because when I look at the project, I say, what can we do that nobody else has done? Include the best of what everybody else is doing. And who do we market to? And who do we sell it to? To put together this project. So, I, dude, I love I love Potsy Weeder, the one two light rotation. I, you know what? I love the guy who says the grow boss is wrong. That's really not appropriate for that channel. But, I, you know, here at my store, we have a couple of other stores opening up. In fact, I think I showed you the picture last week of, of this. Fuck, I'm already over for the show. I... Okay, these are the stores that are in Vegas now. These are the big stores down here on the side of the freeway, 6,000 square feet. My dink little store off here in the circled in green. A couple stores up north. We've had some really big stores open up. I would hate to have to compete. I would hate, and I refuse to compete selling nutrients online. I'm not, I mean, you have to buy so much. I mean, the big stores, they're 12, 10, 12 chains. They get 20% they get off what I get. Of course they can do it like that. What I'm suggesting here is that we take a line that's available to, to, uh, to few others. So we, we, what, we round up the troops, we focus ourselves all in one direction, and we create a bunch of, as professional as we can, content from a group of stoners, and we put it together. I don't know who's going to win and who's going to fail. Just like growing cannabis, you don't know... Who's going to win and who's going to fail? Who's going to get picked up just like the beer companies? Don't know who's going to be the one picked up by InBev. All I'm suggesting is we have an opportunity here to provide news. We have a huge force of people that we could that we could tap into. Um, no, no, no. I see if I Ryan Watson, if I said soluble will clog, that was a mistake. The the granular clogs because granular is meant for the transplant. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, listen, I got a great, I, I great Nate. I, I understand if you got to go. So what I'm saying is I think that we could put together something, including news. Then we take the news. Well, I'm not going to tell you what ideas that I have in a new direction, but I will tell you that I have the ability 
to edit, stream, control, put it all together, broadcast it out there, and sell advertising. What is it worth? I got no idea. What am I gonna pay you? Probably nothing. But what I have here is an opportunity. Uh, listen, I'm not getting paid, and if I get advertising money from the vendors and it comes my way, it won't. it's gonna be as much as the Bushmaster gets paid. It'll be a 24 seven job, just like I've been doing for the last six years, making the books, printing the material. But I am, I'm in a position now to leverage into something else with all of you, because all of you have the same and similar talents that I do with slight variations. And if we put ourselves, if we put it all, if we put, put the store, <laughs> I know we should uh, get the store open. I know. <laughs> go, go. We'll see me tomorrow. Okay, listen. All right. It's always a pleasure. I'm the Grow Boss. It's been a treat this Saturday. Let me say goodbye to you. You get the idea of the show. We'll talk more about it tomorrow. You can call in. Um, it, listen, if you want to buy my books, it's thegrowboss.com. If you want to buy products from my advertisers, always support the Green Pad, right? Clonex, rooting gel. A billion clones a year can't be wrong. Clonex Solution, the best baby food for your plants. Clonex Root Maximizer. The highest concentration, lowest price root maximizer on the market. And remember, get soluble if you're doing, right? If you're doing an aero cloner like Turbo Clone and get granular if you're transplanting in media, you got to know the equipment. All right, Turbo Clone, Mondi, Thermoflow, Clonex, Light Rail. Ah, you guys are awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Go potty your dog. Oh, I'm both nutrients. Woo! Hopes and dreams. <coughs> Thanks, Chris.